Salute. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And tonight, we have a very special guest. This basketball head is a New York City great who didn't play high school basketball, but was a legend on the AAU scene with the Madison Square Broncos under legendary coach Doc Nacelli. May he rest in peace. The Madison Square Broncos rarely got the notoriety of the legendary Riverside Church and Gauchos, but left a huge imprint on New York City basketball, including with players like our next guest. This basketball head did so much damage on the AAU seen by winning the program's only tournament of champions against the likes of Walter Berry, Kenny Smith, and Pearl Washington. Afterwards, still not getting the credit he deserves, Doc Nacelli got Cleveland State University coach Kevin Mackey to take a chance on a New York City native. This basketball head became a Dean's List student with 3.2 average, becoming Cleveland State's all-time leading scorer in the process, scoring 2,256 points, which still stands today. His legend status started against David Robinson of Navy, which Cleveland State defeated in the epic regional semifinals NCAA tournament game. What about his 23-point creation against St. Joseph? which the six-foot-one-inch basketball head became an overnight sensation, the way writers and singers and artists are overnight sensations, meaning he's been working at it nearly his whole life before being discovered by all the doubters out there who gave other teams the pub, as this basketball hood put it in the New York Times article. But after his amazing performance during the Sweet 16 tournament, Appearance the whole country knew about our next guest. So, without further ado, help me welcome to the show Madison Square Bronco and Cleveland State University legend Ken, but we call him Mouse McFadden. You ready? You ready? You ready? Yes. 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 You have you just have stepped into, into, the, into the, world the world of chaos, chaos. Where, everybody where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Hey, G. What's happening, hey, brother? How are you? I'm doing well, man. I can't complain. I can't complain. I can't complain. I was supposed to be having my background playing because we had uh, another Cleveland State great, Corey Coleman. She played for the girls' okay. basketball team for Mary yes, Fortune out there. So, for sure, for sure. Got to give a big salute to Corey Coleman out there. But listen, brother, I've been waiting a long time, okay. man, to get you on here, Glad man. to be a part of it. Let me tell you. Yeah, I had your back home partner, <laughs> Spice and Silk, on here. And it was like, man, you got to get Mousy on there, man, and complete the threesome, no, man. All so, good. No, as soon as he gave me the information, this, I'm like, you know, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me take these hot ass headphones off, because yes, sir. I think you can hear me loud and clear. Um. I, I want to get right into this, man. Like, who introduced you to so, the game? So, you know, it's funny because back in, in New York, I was actually surrounded by four boys club all in walking distance. And so uh, down on East 6th Street, the lower east side of Manhattan, I had the Boys Brotherhood Republic right across the street from my house. And so with that being said, I actually had Pittsburgh, Pitt, uh, Pitt Street Boys Club, and then I had 10th Street Boys Club. And then I had Grand Street Settlement and Henry Street Settlement. Uh, so so, so wow. my two older brothers was always uh, part of the Boys Brotherhood Republic. And so they actually 
uh, I just followed in their steps in the sense of being part of a boys club atmosphere. And and, and then right. I was more of a game room guy. I, I wasn't even aware of gym and basketball and all that other stuff. I was so hooked on ping pong and pool. And so I wasn't even thinking about when I signed up, I wasn't even thinking <laughs> right. about basketball. And so when they finally lured me into the gym, I was running track. So again, I didn't even start off playing basketball. Mm. I was I was in the track and field. And so the coach was like, hey, you know, he pulled me over wow. one day. He was like, hey, shoot some hoops a little bit. And so that's how I got into it. Slowly but surely. Well, thanks, 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 <laughs> yeah. Clark McKinney and Sonny Tyler. Yes. Okay. Look to him, man. Um, for, for my research, uh, they say you're Lower East Side. City. Yes. Lower East Side. Sixth Street and Avenue D. Yes. Sixth Street wow. and Avenue D. Mm -hmm. In the midst of all of this, especially back then, <laughs> trust me, it was a it was a totally different. No, they York. sure don't. don't really understand. Man, as a matter of fact, you know, my, my most of my family is still in the city, and so whenever I get a chance and I go by, I'm like, "Who? This ain't the same neighborhood I grew up in." <laughs> nah, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Buildings everywhere, you know, businesses popping up. It's like a whole yes, it is. different New York Yes, city. it is. Right. Especially in certain places. Yeah. So when 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 you started to, you know, get into the ball, what parks did you develop your game at? Was it strictly at the boys' clubs? Mo or was that most the of the time, because well? I, I, I was indoors for a majority uh, growing up. But you know, you know, you know, when you play in New York City, you gotta go outside. You know, it's nothing like that summertime playing sun up to sundown. Then we would move to courts where we had TV lights so we can continue to play all day, all night until somebody come knocks till you know, mom's just looking for you. It's time to go inside. And so, you know, thirty fourth street, thirty um one thirty four park. Uh we would play we would play a whole okay. lot over there. And then uh Right, right inside Jacob Reese uh, projects, we had a court in between, so we were playing there all day, all night, and so those were the two major mm. courts that I would really uh, home in on my skills. Okay, w was it like an early game when you was playing that that you participated in, that that had the referee? What was that first? So that game first like game. I remember when I started off playing and I got real serious by the time we had officials, I wasn't allowed to play in my age group. So, so I started off uh, Boys Brotherhood Park. We had 10, 12, 14, and 16 uh, PAL, and I started off playing the PAL, the Police Athletic League. But they would never let me play with my age group because I was so dominant with them. If I stayed 10 and under, it wasn't fair to the other kids because I just, just score a hundred. And so I always had to play up. So they would make me play with the 12 year olds, which was kind of cool. And when I was 12, I had to play with the 14s. And so lo and behold, I was still getting quality minutes, even though I was playing up and I was the youngest one uh, on the team all the time. And so I, I look back at that and I wonder, was that a disservice to me? But then at the same time, it, it gave me a huge advantage as well. Like there, there, there's two type of players I look at today. There's late bloomers and there's early bloomers. And so some kids, you know, you develop yeah. so quickly, it's easy for the rest of the group to catch up to you because you done hit your peak. And so even though, even though I was an early bloomer, I maintained a certain level of basketball skills uh, even at an early age, and we always played up. Even when I when I finally hit 16, and right before I left to go to college, I was playing in the unlimited tournaments, and we were dominating. It was we had a five that would travel all over New York and smash everybody. And so mm. Calvin Lamb went to LIU. Gus Santos Gus Santos went to yep, Wichita yep. State. Larry Jenkins went to the University of Hartford. And then I went to Cleveland State. And so we had Anton Cuspid. He didn't, he didn't go to college. 
and uh, Keith Robinson, he didn't go to college, but uh, 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 man, we had a five. We would go all over, all over. And then we would just play everybody at any playground and have fun and just kick it until everybody spread off and went to college. You know, you, you saying that you playing up. Now these kids want to play <laughs> back. Everybody's getting reclassed and, you know, playing, you know, uh, below their age. Uh, or right on it, uh, they don't want to play up. I'm not saying no, all the kids. That is a serious kids. trend, and, and and you're right about that. And then it almost like make them look much better. But then if you know the scoop, hey, this kid is older than these guys, it sheds a different light on you. So you're thinking, oh, man, he's dominating. But no, he should because he's a little bit older. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. That's right. That came about within the last – what would say 10, 15 years, right? Yeah, and, and now, you know, uh, now at this point, I, I kind of get it now today because of the transfer portal situation, right? Because a lot of coaches are not recruiting high school kids. They actually That's recruiting correct. for the transfer portal. So a kid is coming out now during his right time it's kind of unfair because coaches are not looking at the younger kids That's anymore. Right. They're taking That's the right. kids. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. And, and that portal is something else. So so it, it, it's very interesting that, you know, we used to fight if you wanted to transfer, you wanted to leave the school, you was unhappy. Now I got to battle with you for you to release me. And now I don't even got to tell you anything. I put my name in the portal and see you later. So... Man, have things changed? Wait, I remember when we we were we we got put on probation, Cleveland State, and so uh, I happened to talk about wanting to transfer, and the word got out. I received so many calls from so many schools; it was unbelievable. And so I took a pit. I took a visit to DePaul. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna test the waters out. I called Rod Strickland. I'm like, hey, Rod, how's Joe down there? Can I pull the trigger? And he's like, well, this, you know, it's pretty cool. He's like, you know, Joe have his moments. But overall, you know, my experience was cool. And so I went and visited, and I kicked it with Kevin Edwards. And I know Kevin Edwards from Cleveland, Ohio, anyway. But then at the last minute, I'm like, you know what? I, I don't have to go anyplace. I have one year left. I, I didn't need a notoriety. So it wasn't like I needed to go someplace to become no, no, noticed. Uh, because everybody knew who I was and what I was doing yeah. at Cleveland State. So I'm like, you know yeah. what, I'm going to ride out this last year and call it a day. If I did anything, I should have I should have left for the draft. I found out years later, and 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 one of my agents who I was who I was very close with, he said, you know, I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want you to make a decision. He said, but New Jersey wanted you so bad. They thought you was definitely leaving at your third year. They, 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 they couldn't believe that I came back to college. I'm like, now you're going to... Now... I, I couldn't believe you came back. After yeah, that but you know, what? it was run. right on that border where guys were starting to skip. So I'm used to going for... Yeah, it wasn't... It wasn't... It wasn't... It wasn't the right. these college girls right. back then. And it so really that's wasn't. why I'm thinking. It really wasn't. You, you only had like the, the, the really big time athletes who, you know, probably that's would guarantee correct. the situation. So for me. And, 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 and back you then, couldn't come back. once you left, that's you couldn't it. come back. Once you put your name into the draft, right. it wasn't right. right. You know, now, as long as you don't sign with an agent, <laughs> you can come back. You can test the waters. You can go to the camp. You can figure out where you're going to go. If the guys say, hey, maybe you need to come back, you can come back. And so it was a little bit different, you know. If, and if I had to do it all over again, I would do the same thing. I would do the same thing. I mean, life is good, and 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 college was fantastic. And so I had a night. I had a beautiful run playing ball, starting off with the Lower East Side, New York City kid. I mean, just just you and you know the sports world. It it can take you places you've never been before. I mean, you get a chance to meet people. I mean, you're traveling, you're meeting people. And if you're lucky enough to get paid, hey, I'm going to get paid for doing something that I love to do. I'm going to do anyway. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. 
Yeah, that's so true. Yes. That's so true. And listen, they, they can't play those, you know, one shining moments or anytime Cleveland State is even in the tournament, your name going to pop up, man. You, you just part of that uh, NCAA uh, law. That's never gonna go away. Yeah, that, that, so, that, that's so. I, my phone always yeah, starts ringing. Yeah. March Madness. My phone rings all the time. Everybody want to do an interview. So you know, I'm just like, okay, it's March. It's March. It's that time of year. And so you know what's really nice. You know, more and more, more and more, we starting to see these these top seeds knocking off or being knocked off, right? And so. We're, yeah. we're we're also pioneers yeah. in that department. I mean, 13th seed knocking off a number yeah. two and Bobby Knight and Indiana Cleveland State, they like, who the hell are these guys? Right? And so now, <laughs> and, and I love the little run that um, Coastal Carolina put on a couple of years ago. Oh, they, oh. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. they did. So, so, yes, they did. so times have really changed. That's correct. And, and That's correct. Saint Lo and behold, right? St. Peter's. Oh Saint man, Peter. they really. I mean, what, 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 what a fantastic story. And so, yeah, and for me, the games was a little bit more fixed. In a sense, the only thing I love about the NCAA is now you can put me on a neutral site. Just give me a fair game. See, there's a reason why during during the course of the season they send you over to the to the to the top seeds. You got to go to their home court. They're not gonna let you walk out of there with no victory, under no circumstances, right? Right. Talk about and so, it. Talk wait, about wait. it. Now here come the NCAA. Oh no, no, I'm gonna play you on a neutral site now, okay? And so, throw the ball up and give me a fair game. That was our mindset because we wasn't worried about anybody. And unless you really followed us, like you would not believe how good we were. And so locally, I mean, we were blasting everybody. We, we played Michigan and Roy Topley was just a beast. We played, we played against DePaul and Rod and those guys. And we went to their home court, we beat those guys. And so, well, hold on. we go we gonna get there. I okay, don't want to move. Okay, I don't want to move okay. too fast. I, 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 we we definitely gonna get there. I want to give a big shout out to my guy, Barbito Garcia, legendary hip hop figure and basketball lifer. I do you do know Barbito? Not. Okay, let me tell you who Barbito is. Barbito is a hip hop legend because he hosted one of you know the best radio station in New York City back in the days. Uh. WKCR, if I if I got that right, um, from Columbia, but like early Jay Z, early Nas, everyone had to go to Dennis his show Sweet. to get some <laughs> kind of notoriety, right? But he's also like he's like another legend in the sneaker department. The reason why kids and people all across the country celebrate sneakers the way they do wow. is because of him. That's nice. Yeah, he, okay, he, he was, out. he's a legend in right. that area, legendary DJ. And he also, when we when we talk about the Nike freestyle commercials, yeah. the guy dribbling the balls and making the music, he was Sweet. the guy behind that as well. Okay, okay. You know, he, he somebody put him, him in that position. Then he showed love to guys like myself and all the other New York City ball players. Got me in above the rim and a whole bunch of other things, but. He's he's definitely uh, one of the guys in the New York City basketball scene. He he said, "Ask you about Soul Man, Tate." Yeah, you know Tate. I met Soul Man once I became part of Madison Square Boys Club, and so that was kind of late. So ah. so my first my first fourteen fifteen years, I was with the Boys Brotherhood Republic, and then. Uh, I met Doc Nacelli and Doc, and, and I had this thing about playing for coaches. You know, if I'm down with you, I'm down with you. And so me being loyal to the Boys Brotherhood Republic, as long as they, we played against Broncos. And so I scored 55 mm -hmm. against Doc. And Doc said, uh, 
I got a tournament I want you to start playing in. He's like, hey, can you make your way over to, to Madison Square Boys Club? So I'm like, okay. I'm like, hey, as long as BBR isn't playing in the league, I got no problem with joining you. I thought Doc was a great guy. You know, first impressions was like really cool when I met him. No problem. I started going over to boys. I started going over to Madison Square Boys Club. And then so so I started I started playing with some of the guys who was over there locally. And that's how I met Soul Man. And so we became good friends. You know, we started we we kicked it and he was like, Yo, who this new guy coming over to this gym? And so it was kind of cool. It was pretty cool, you know, a different a different atmosphere. What was up? Was you guys so, from the so same neighborhood? Basically, they're like twenty something blocks away from where I live. You know how New York City blocks. So so not okay. too far. Not too far. You know, you know us. We we walking all over the place back in the days. I mean, you know, these these kids can't That's walk right. two That's blocks. Right. They need a school bus. Like we walked two miles to go to school, snow up to our knees, it didn't matter. We walked. So for me, that's just like walking distance. You know, it, it's, it wasn't no big, big deal. But yeah, so man, oh man, yeah, yeah, love so man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my guy's Barbito book is called uh, "Where You Get Those," a uh, New York City uh, basketball sneakers from 1960 to 1987. Right. So just want to plug that. Now, Soul Man and I played together. Okay, okay. That was my guy, <laughs> right? right? Um, I, uh, I bought him the Breedboard to play with me, and we won the championship uh, out in Breedboard. Um, great dude, put on the show. I remember him throwing between my guy Pat Burke legs, <laughs> okay. right? He threw it between Pat Burke legs. Pat turned around, he grabbed it. And as he turned around, he threw it between the other nice. way. Ooh. Wait. This that's is, nice. This is right, 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 right. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. He'll put he okay. would put it on you like that too. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Give a shout out to my guy who dreams in the building. What up, Jay? Listen, this, this basketball thing, man, is so crazy. And let's talk about the loyalty, right? Uh Silk and Spice went up to Mitchell Project to, to trial for the gaucho. Now, Ross Strickland is telling okay. me the story because I had him on as well. And he said, yo, these guys came up there and balled out. And they never came back. We was like, with you know, with the two guys from Brooklyn. And I, I, I kind of found out what happened. Uh, my coach told him to don't, they don't play for the gauchos. The only team they're allowed to play for is the Master Square Broncos. Which all of us okay. at Lincoln yeah, played right, for. Right, 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 right. And at, even even though we played for Doc, all of those guys always tried to snatch us up, you know, the Riverside and the Gauchos. But like you right. said, we was loyal to hey, Doc. Little, the story is, you know, he hey, was he, such a good yeah, man. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Doc had Pearl before he went to the Gauchos. Yes, yeah, people don't know that. Uh, Lou stole Pearl from Doc. Yes. Little, Yo. little, no, little, little breaking known news, history. Breaking news. Pearl breaking was down news. with Doc. Gaucho stole Pearl from Bat Madison Square Boys Club. Yes, sir. That broke Doc hard, wow. too. That broke Doc hard. He, 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 you know, I mean, he was cool with it, but then, you know, Riverside and the Gaucho, they, you know, they, they're known. They'll, they'll come and snatch you up. That their That's paper, correct. their paper was so long. Now that I realize, Doc organization right. is a nonprofit group, right? And these guys were, for, you know, these guys make a lot of money. One was a That's lawyer, right. one older. That's ton right. Of so, so they always paid guys, always. I mean, think about. It. I mean, 16, 17 years old, you gonna load my pockets up with money? Of course, I'm a jump ship. It takes a, it takes a special person to yeah. be like, no. Nah. I ain't gonna do it, it cause cause uh, Gauchos recruited me, and I was like, no, I I can't do that, I can't do that, and and as a matter of fact, I used to play it when I played against Riverside. Lloyd brought me to Florida for AAU championship. That's the only time I ever played with Riverside, one time, and and because we wasn't in it, 
And again, as long as Madison Square Boys Club is not in a tournament, I can play with you. That's right. And so, you know, you you know, as you advance more and more, uh, you know, how everybody's switching up their teams, you can switch up your roster. So he asked me, he's like, Miles, I want to take you to Florida to play with Riverside for the for the championship. And so Doc said, No way. He was like, no way in the world you're gonna have my player. Now, if you take me along, we Miles can play for you. And so it was a package deal. He took right. <laughs> he took Doc, and I played with him just one time. And we lost to some guys from California. I was so pissed. And you got any soft, you know, back in the days, I look at <laughs> California guys. Man, you guys are too damn soft, okay? But but one thing, one thing they can always do is they can stroke it. I give them credit. They they can always stroke it from the outside. Yes. Even back in the days, I look at the guys now. Even back in the days, they was always able to stroke it. But I did play with Riverside just one time in one game. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, Moss, when you was coming up, who was the best player on the Lower East Side when you lived in Alphabet City? So, you know what? That, 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 at the Boys Brotherhood Republic, it was, we had a nucleus of guys that was so unknown. Like we never stepped out. Most of the guys didn't step out of that Lower East Side vicinity, so to speak. We played PAL, and, and, right. and then there, and and they played in different leagues, but they didn't really. They wasn't noticed. Nobody took hold of the talent that we had downtown. Uh, so Jason Williams, who went mm. to St. John's, Jason, you know, me and Jason, we were in the same neighborhood. And, and, and That's crazy because Bobby you know, just Right, said right. So said Jason, and it's funny crazy, about Jason. Right? So Jason, you know, Jason was only 6'2", you know, throughout our time. Jason went away one summer. This guy come back. He's 6'9", 6'10". We like, dude, what are you eating? <laughs> It's almost like the Anthony Davis story. You know, Anthony Davis is only 6'2". And, and by the way, the yeah. only school to offer him a scholarship was Cleveland State University. The only school wow. when he was 6'2", playing a point guard. He goes away, come back the next summer, 6'10". That takes care of Cleveland State because everybody and their mama went chasing after this guy. It was like, okay, we, we don't have no chance to get him down. <laughs> But the only school to offer him a scholarship was Cleveland State. But to answer your question, it was funny because uh, Lee Drew Cannon, Lee Drew Cannon was an unbelievable, well, there, it, it, it's so many guys I can possibly name. One guy that, one guy that really stuck out, Juanito Santos. This is Gus Santos' brother. Juanito, 6'10". Mm. He was handling the ball. I mean, he was so dominant. It was like a man among boys. Yes. Was he, uh -huh. was he a Hispanic so he played. He played. He played professionally wow. in Puerto Rico. But he just, I mean, he just did anything and everything. Now, we also had now, I, and, and, and I try to rate the two best Spanish brothers I ever played against. Alfredo, Alfredo Gomez. Six about six four six five, hands like Dr. J. He will dunk on your head, and he had the outside jumper, so fearless. When we would go up to LaGuardia House on 116th Street, they would call him the Puerto Rican Dr. J, and he will bust you up for fifty every night, nonstop, like it's no big deal. And so it was always interesting when we would go play in Brooklyn or uptown. They would, everybody would ask, hey, yo, where are you guys from? And we would say Manhattan. They'd look at Manhattan, lower east side of Manhattan. And they was like, man, where that's at? Well, right before you cross the bridge to get into Brooklyn <laughs> is the lower east side of Manhattan. Right. So it was always pretty cool. Like, you know, when we, when we would shine out and we would go play in Queens and Bronx and Brooklyn. Man, where are you guys from? We would, we would smash it, man. We would, we were balling back then with the, we were balling. Wow. Wow. We got another hip-hop legend in the building. 
Dante Ross is in the building. Salute to Dante Ross. And also my guy, A-Game, Ron Sue Prince. He run another basketball show out here. So salute to the guys out here. Okay. This is crazy, man. Man, you, sweet. You a lot What's of love, up, family? Man. Yeah, yeah, brother. This is this is crazy. So I had uh I did. I did. My man is asking me. Hey, yes, I did go to Seward. Hey, yeah, hey, so this is what we're about to man, talk that, about. That right? is such a that's such a funny that's such a funny story. Because I went to Seward, right? And I never played. Uh -huh. I shouldn't say never played. I played about four games. Okay. And so right. I was also, I was always hearing about high school basketball, high school basketball. How I'm like, okay, let me test this out. I'm looking at it just another league. When I first got into Seward Park, I didn't know playing high school ball transitioned you over to college. I just thought it was another league. So I'm looking at it like, hey, Okay, you know, I, I was playing in so many leagues, Glenn, and I was traveling all over the place. And so I'm like, okay, let me let me, let me see right. what everybody talking about, this hype. So I played about four games. I averaged about 45, easily. If they go back and check the games that I played in, easily. And I'm like, wait, what's, what's so special? Yo, hold on, man. You... And you and you said it so easy, like everybody okay. can do that. Wait, no one wait, doing that wait I was easily. I never had a game less than twenty-five or thirty. Easily, I'm like, what's the big deal about this? This ain't nothing. So then they told me, if you play high school ball, right. you can't play in no other leagues. I said, well, I ain't playing in this no more because I'd rather play in ten leagues than play in one league. Why would I play <laughs> in one league when I can play all over all the time? You know, I was I was young. I didn't know no right, I'm right. just, just want to ball out. That was my mindset. And so I played a couple of games. I said, Coach, man, I, I, I'm cool. They, they I, after I made that decision, I had the roughest time in Seward Park. I mean, they could they would take me out of my classes. Like I can't believe you don't want to play. And I heard how good you are. I had one teacher, Miss Rosenbaum, was my history teacher. She was the only one that would not allow the coach right. and the dean to come into her class and interrupt me during school. She was like, if you don't want to play, it's okay. You don't have to mm. play. <laughs> I was like, thank you, Ms. Rosenbaum, because I'm catching hell from this. Uh, but, but yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy story. Wow. Listen, um, we had Zaro on here. Zaro Bobby Hunter from okay. Stone Park. Right? Okay. He played with the Harlem Globetrotters. We had him on the show, and when he, he was talking about, you know, all the great players that went to Sewer Park and how good they were during the 60s. And a lot of times we don't make the connection of, about the high school scene and what's going on there because if no one is there to tell us and give us that information, we just think it's, That's you correct. know, That's another right. regular That's league right. like you did. Right. right? You, you don't know. And so when people go, you know, he didn't play high school basketball, right. he didn't know. Wait, he and that's, it was that's, league. that's so true. That was high school. That is so true. As a matter of fact, I will get, wait, we had four guys, Glenn. Larry Jenkins, Calvin Lamb, and myself. Now, we played in all the leagues, so we knew everybody. When the high school teams would come in, right. and they would see us on the sideline, they would like, Jesus Christ, the best players y'all got is dress. In clothes. <laughs> I mean, they couldn't believe they none of you guys is playing for Seward Park. And 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 by then, I read I, wait, I had set in my mind I loved AAU ball. Stack all the right. all cities, all state, and everybody else on one team, your McDonald's all American. Okay, because you know you can you can you can stack your team up in AAU and go play. Oh man. I want to play against them now. That's better than any high school team. I mean, because you got the cream of the crop. Obviously, you're going to load up. Gauchos is going to load right. up. Riverside Church is going to load up. And so I enjoyed just playing AAU and traveling. Uh, Marty Blake would never rate me. Never. He was like, Miles, nope. You don't play no high school ball. I can't rate you. He's like, oh, I know who you are. But he said, nope, can't do it. I'm like, come on, Marty. 
where, where are you going to toss me in that? Nope, he wouldn't even discuss it with me. Year after year, I would tease him all the time. Hey, Marty, how you like me now? He's like, Miles, no matter. You ain't playing no high school football. Right. That's crazy. Listen, I asked Ross Strickland, yo, how come you didn't play McDonald's All-American? He said, Glenn, yes, sir. politics, right? Politics in the game. He said, I went around the country and I kicked everybody's ass. But since I didn't go to the last session of Five Star, which which he didn't, he couldn't get placed on the McDonald's All-American team. You know who else didn't go to Who's the last that? session of Five Star? My guy from Cardinal Hayes, wow. uh, Jamal Mashburn. Wow. He was Mr. Basketball of New York State, but they didn't put him on the McDonald's All-American team that 1990 year where five players from New York City was Man, on the McDonald's All-American team. Yes, sir. You, you see what I'm saying? So the fact that you didn't play basketball, knowing you could compete with the best that was in high school because you was playing AAU, he refused right. to put you on, the, on that and list. He, and he controlled everything. Oh, he controlled everything. Yeah, just oh. like the guys at Foster. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you, the, listen, the more I, I start to, you know, do these shows and do uh, research and, and talk to players, you find out the reason why. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? So, now... My man asked, my man Barbito, he asked a question like, how did he get recruited to Cleveland State? Well, he's kind of explaining to you yes. right now, right? Because before I saw you play, Silk and Spice used okay. to come back and, and oh, talk man, about Oh, man, that was you. my dude. <laughs> okay. And we were the young guys coming up. So... Tell, tell that story how you got connected with, with Cleveland State. So, so Square AAU basketball. That's how all the college coaches be sitting in the stands, right? AAU. I just I just made sure playing with Madison Square Broncos, Doc took me to another level of basketball uh, that was high school related, sort of, in, in, in a sense. Because, you know, you got all your high school guys playing in AAU basketball once their season is over. So everybody is hitting the road. You're playing in different states. You're playing in different cities. And so lo and behold, every time Broncos show up and we're playing against all these other teams, they're like, Jesus Christ, who is this guy they got? Who, hey, Doc, who is this kid? Where, what school he going to? So on and so forth. So, you know, year after year, week after week, oh, I'm putting on the show. So you could, and that's what changed my mind about high school basketball, because in my mind, oh, I'm going to college. Oh, easily. You, you got to be crazy not to recruit me. So Big East, you know, Big East, we were number one back in the days in our era. Big East basketball was the ultimate. So all the schools yeah. were recruiting me yeah. for Big East. Uh, and, and Seton Hall, as a matter of fact, um, uh, PJ, called, oh, man, he was all mouse. Me and, and uh, Lee Majors. Yeah, oh, it was a toss up. It was a toss up. It was a toss up. He he was debating between which one he should take, and so you know, at the last minute, I decided to go to Cleveland State, but uh, uh, Providence, Seton Hall, the Johnny sent me one letter. I had about four different schools from the Big East trying to get me to go to Big East basketball. But I was also trying to just go a little further outside the city. And so playing AAU basketball, every time I would look up, Kevin Mackey was sitting in the stands. And so he was at Boston College. They were trying to get me at Boston College at that time. And then he got the job at Cleveland State University. And... And so he, he stayed in touch with Doc. He made sure he, he kept that connection because they were trying to get me at Boston College. But once he got the head coaching job, he's like, hey, I got to get this kid over at Cleveland State. And so his first couple of years at Cleveland State, they were balling. We just didn't get no respect. It was called an AMQ-8 at that time. So they won the conference, and they didn't let him in the NCAA tournament. 
And so they finished 21 and eight. And at that time he was recruiting me to come to Cleveland State. And so I pulled the trigger on Cleveland State because my final decision, and lo and behold, what's crazy, Can't hear you. Go, go in and come back out. There you go. I can hear there you, you go. I'm sorry. Uh, my battery. So, so uh, I was considering going to Hampton NAIA basketball. And not to break off, but today, and I, and I tell you, I got a problem with African Americans going to these powerhouse schools. We really need to consider going to these black schools, okay? And I and I played college basketball and I worked for Cleveland State behind the scenes for 6 years as well. And so I understand the ins and the outs. But the fact that they're making so much money off of us and we're not getting a dime. Thank God. Finally, they opened the doors that we can make a couple of dollars now. But I always said 15 years, 20 years ago, and I tell everybody like Mac, man, you were so right. If we started to go to these NAI schools, they would have paid us a long time ago. Cause the only thing they're going to do is roll those cameras over to the NAI schools we're still going to get drafted because the number two, number three, number four player in the country. Oh, they're going to follow what you're doing. And you know, basketball, I don't care if you're playing on the moon. They got a scout on the moon to recruit you over there. Oh, man, this dude killing everybody. Bring them over here. Right? That's how the floodgates open up for these right. international players. There's a recruiter. Tell them, hey, you better check this guy out. Bring him on over here. But I'm sorry, that just broke off. Uh, man, that was Rod texting me. Rod Strick, and he's, he's not on the show. I had hit him up a couple of days ago, and I'm like, hey, Rod. Man, wait, wait, that's one of my favorite players of all time, Rod Strick. Yeah, yeah, and listen. Okay. It, he's probably going to check it right now because that's how he, he got the show, you know. Uh, okay. he, he was coming on the show watching, and then, you know, me bragging, I'm seeing, and I'm going, yeah, I don't know if y'all don't want to say championship and Spice was eligible. <laughs> Right, because okay. they messed Spice up for a senior year. And I, I think we'd have given him problems. But uh, he came on the show and he showed love, man. That that was my teammate at Empire so, so getting, Game. So Silk and Spice. Much so, love. So I had three years with Silk and Spice on the AAU tour. And so I remember when I first met those guys. And what a package. What a package. Because you wouldn't see one without the other. Right? It was a perfect duo for them. And so Dr. Doc was like, man, I got Silk. I got spice and I got mouse in my backcourt. Oh, you know we're gonna tangle with anybody in the country. Yeah. Then we had Mark Bryant, Seton Hall, and we had Marty yeah. Sally. Yeah. Marty Sally probably averaged about thirty rebounds in AAU. You not get nobody got a rebound if mm. Marty played in the game. And then we had Damari Riddick. Yeah, so, so we That's traveled right. on the yeah. AAU yeah. circuit. So that was a nice little crew to uh, go around, and we would die. Oh. Listen, I had coach, okay. legendary coach Ray Haskins. He was on the show, Coach Alexander Hamilton. We're talking one day at Kingston Park, and I asked him, just asked him, no bias involved. I said, who was the best backcourt that you've ever seen? Now, we talking about a guy who had Beetle Washington, Andre Irvin, Ed Davida, he had them all, Jerry Ice Reynolds, and he's seen them all. He said, Glenn, the best backcourt I've seen in my 30, 40 years in basketball was Spice and Silk. <laughs> he said, right. he said, and it's not the knock, Pearl and 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 uh Elma. Right. And he's seen them all, played against them. He said he never saw two guards that complimented so well. each other so well. And they only played one year of high school wow. basketball together. Yeah. I thought. Their sophomore year. 
Because Silk got That's shot. Right. Remember, Silk got shot. And Spice played the junior year. And then Spice was in the eligible to senior Ooh. year. And Silk was able to play. Wait, wait. So they both only wow. played two years of high school. See, ball. see, and that, and I didn't even know that. And I had three years of AAU with those guys. But when I first met them, what, what a combination. They were on the same page. They knew each other. Like, they grew up brother and sister. Like, they slept with each other in the same bed. Like, I love these guys. <laughs> and, and, you know, Spice, Spice, yeah. Spice kicked me and Silk the ball all day, man. He he did his thing. I'm like, Jesus, these dudes is nice. One of the one one of the one of the best point guards in the Lower East Side, Eric Singleton, went to uh, Franklin. He won the uh, championship with Walter. So er Eric oh, from yeah, he, he's talked about a lot on here. Oh, I had Kenny Hutchinson uh, on here. He talked about uh, it. Wait, you look at this little chubby guy. You uh, you don't think he's a baller, and he puts it on you so bad he'll change your mind in a heartbeat. So. Er one of them guys you just don't Ooh. think like he's that good. Oh my goodness. By the time he's finished with you, it's over. So 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 Eric's from my neighborhood as well, Lower East Side. What was Raheem so, from? So, your so they talking Raheem about Raheem Wise and Raheem. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes indeed. Yes. Wow. Cal this this is this is this is crazy. He's Cal Talking about, of course, right. he said Cal Lamb. Of course, look, man, listen. I just want to make an announcement real quick. Those of you who haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go to my YouTube page and subscribe. It costs you nothing. Same name, basketball heads. One word, two Z's. All right. Thank you. So, look, I I, I want to get back to Doc real quick because you know I know he played a a, a pivotal. You know, moment in your life, you know, very pivotal, very important. How, how, what did it mean to have him in your life at that moment and join that so, crossroads? So it, it was, it, it was super cool. And you know, everything in life is time related, right? So the timing yes. was perfect because I was at a standpoint. I was tussling with Seward Park for not playing. And so I was like, okay, you know what? I was just going through the motions. I had fell, I had fell off a little bit academically. I wasn't going to all my classes. And lo and behold, Doc steps in. Nick of time. Right at the point where I was just like starting to just unfocus myself school wise. So he pulls me over. Mm. He said, You're gonna bring me your report card. None of my other coaches have ever made me show the report card. I was like, uh oh. Dude, you better get these grades back in because we only got a quarter to show him your report card. So it kind of it kind of scared me in a good way because it, it it made me refocus just like that. And so so he was like, uh, and he hey pal, everybody was his pal, right? Everybody was his pal. Hey pal, uh, you're gonna show me your report card, and you're not gonna play with me. If it's not good enough. Oh man. I'm like, okay. And so 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 he got me back on the ball real fast. So I love I, I love him for that. I love him for that. And then, you know, just 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 taking me out on the AAU circuit, being able to play in different cities and different guys, getting me exposed to 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 college coaches sitting in the stands. It opened the door up for Kevin Mackey to see me, to recruit me, to play at Cleveland State. Um, I was also part of another program, Henry Street Settlement. And for three years in a row, mm. they would tour all the NAIA schools. So Hampton and Virginia Union and uh, North Carolina, AT&T. We went to Virginia and the coach we got off the bus and we played against everybody on the, the division in the NAIA schools. And the coach sat us down right before we played the game. And he says, hey, uh, he looked at us and he says, nobody on this bus can ever play for our team. We said, okay. Woo! So we played against his guys. We must have beat them by 100, Glenn. 
So, you know, he wants me and Calvin Lamb in his backcourt. I'm like, oh, now we're good enough. Nope. You can never have our services. Wait, wait. Without why, even why would he say seeing that? us play, Glenn. I, I don't know if he was drinking that day um, or what his mindset was or he thought under no circumstances can you guys compete with my guys. By the time we got a hold of his guys, I'm like, your guys stink. <laughs> okay? You are a bad recruiter. First of all, you should never judge the book by its cover. And now you can't even go That's back because right. even if we wanted to go there, our coach would not let, oh, my goodness, he would not, under no circle, he's like, you can't have my guys. We're not good enough. We got right back on the bus. We went to the next stop, played some more games, and, and, and kept it moving. But uh, that was one of the, I mean, and I actually considered NAIA basketball. And Hampton had the two seven-footers, and they didn't have no guards. And so they were trying, man, they, they tried their best, but it was something about after meeting Kevin Mackey, playing AAU, and him watching me for so many years and just staying on top of his game because he, 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 he was there every time I look up. I'm like, dude, I mean, you're like a poster on my wall. And so it, it was kind of nice. So I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> and so when he got that job and I watched Cleveland State and they had Clinton Smith and Clinton Ramsey, and Clinton Smith was a bona fide pro. He's six six. He he was Scotty Pippen, and so he, I was like, wow, man, this dude is unbelievable. And so they had finished twenty one and eight. They didn't get no respect by the NCAA. I'm like, you know what? They they need another piece to the puzzle. And guess who that person is? I'm like, no, I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna go to Cleveland State. I'm gonna turn this place out. And sure enough, they let us in the NCAA. Right. But uh, that 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 was that was one of the main reasons why I actually went to Cleveland State. I chose Cleveland State at that time. That's awesome, man. Listen, Doc don't get the credit he deserves, right? You know, you get a lot of guys on here. They, you know, they talk about the Riverside, which is rightfully so, and the Gauchos. But every time I get a chance, I plug the Master Square Broncos. Uh, because it gave a lot of stuff op opportunity, and look, during my junior year, we beat the River we beat Riverside and the Gauchos to win the city, you know, to to go on to the Nationals. We didn't win the Nationals like you guys, but that year we was the best. Right, no, no, man, man kudos, man. Really appreciate you always giving Doc a shout out because he 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 definitely deserves it. He definitely deserves it. Oh. For sure. My, my coach wouldn't have it any other way. We couldn't play for nobody else. Okay. Doc or, no, or nothing. You know? So, look. A lot of guys come on here, and, and I asked them, right? And I know a lot of guys took some ass whoopings, man. But who who was the guy asked you bust to let you know you was one of the top guys in the Ooh, country? wow. I don't... Glenn, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, and and that's not to be bragging. Before I came to Cleveland State, playing in leagues in in New York City, man, I was averaging about fifty. Right. So so man, Damn. when I took man, I was busting. I mean, it it, it didn't even matter. Get, I mean, they brought Gary Springer down. He played in the in the LES tournament. Um, I, it, man, I don't even know if you, I had this, I, I have this motto and I, and I hold it true to today. I don't give a damn who you are. If you on the other side, you're done. If you don't got the same Jersey, I'm out. That's about 40, 45, 50. So when we go into these different leagues, wow. like, I don't Listen. know. I didn't pay. And I, and I'm not big That's on names. Crazy. I didn't follow nobody name. I just know you took an L. <laughs> you got an L in your back. <laughs> I'm going to shoot. <laughs> okay. So, I don't care so, who you well, are. Let them know. And so, 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 I don't know, Clint. That's a tough one. I, I mean, I was chewing guys. Right. Don't, don't worry about okay, it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay. Don't, don't worry about it. It's all good. 
I know, I know, I know. A lot of guys took that ass whooping, so I so, already hey, know. Hey, I'll tell, I'll tell me, you bro. a little story for real. So Jason gets a big head, right? Jason, right. when we grew up in the same neighborhood, so you know, Jason, we used to dominate Jason, but Jim, when he came back, he was a beast. But we used to dominate Jason. So Jason go to St. John, <laughs> right? Jason right, get a right. big head. He go to St. John's. So now he would Mark Jackson and 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 and, and uh, what's the shooter? Uh, Chris Mullen, the whole you know he, he's St. John, James St. John fan. Chris Mullen, right, right, right. So he brings Mark to my yep. park, one thirty-four. That I played all day, every day. Mm -mm. I said, uh, so he's like a mouse. I got Mark with me. I said, Jason, are you for real? I said, hey, Mark, you better let your boy know what time is it. I said, you really want to play me one-on-one? -on -one? Hey, Mark said, hey, Mouse, Mouse, whoa, 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 whoa. Mark said, Mouse, Mark, Mark, man, Mouse, man, I ain't on that. I know who you are. I said, go explain that shit to Jason. Because if y'all think y'all coming down here to bust me up, and my, you done lost your damn mind. <laughs> it was so funny. And so out of wow. respect, I'm like, oh, Mark, because, you know, we've been, we've been balling against each other. But Jason, Jason think, oh, yeah, yeah, I got right, somebody right. for you now. You ain't going to be dominating us like this. Jason, you forgot who I am. And so Mark went over to, you know, they had their little discussion or whatever. They came back. He was like, no, nah, Mark was like, no, nah, Miles, come on, man. We cool. I ain't worried about that shit. And, you know, wait, wait. I am so proud of our New York City brothers. Like Mark behind the scenes doing his thing, you know, out away from basketball. Yeah. Hell of a career, hell of a ball yeah. player. Uh, he's announcing and doing a fantastic job. Man, man, I, I love that. Man, I love seeing him. Rod doing his thing. You got that, wait, wait, Kate, wait. Another one. All Star Weekend. I only, the only place I stepped out, I went to Kenny Smith party. I gave up my tickets. You know, I did the fiftieth here in Cleveland. We had the, we had the seventy fifth. Right, right. I'm like, man, I ain't. I just wasn't in the mood to to participate in all the events. I just hung out with K Smith and Rod. I went to K Smith party and I'm like, okay, I'm good. That was good enough for me. I'm like, I'm good. I'm with my homies. We taking pictures. I'm like, man, I'm in heaven. And that's all I did all star weekend. Wow. He goes. So I hit Rod up. Um, he said, that's my guy, killer, unstoppable, crafty, Ross Strickland. <laughs> that's right. Wait, wait. wait. And I, so Rod does a camp in Cleveland, right? And so he's talking to the kids. Right. And so I had I had finished talking to the kids. And so they asked me, they like, yo, Miles, who, who's your favorite I'm player? I said, Ross Strickland. They're like, excuse me? You heard me? And I'm a Ross Strickland fan. And so Rod got a hold of that later on. He's like, yo, mouth the kids, like, you know, they said, like, they ask you a question, who the best? Yeah, you are. I ain't mad about it. And so so, so we became really cool after that. It's kind of funny. We became really cool. And then when Deron Lamb went to Kentucky, I would see Rod all the time because I would go all to, the, to all the games and we would kick it and shoot the breeze then. One time we were in the hallway. We were out outside the right. locker room. And so, you know how you can feel somebody just staring at you? And so, I turn around, I look at Rod, I'm like, yo, Rod, like, you okay? He's like, Mouse, man, I still can't believe y'all beat us in that game in DePaul. Wait, <laughs> out of the clear blue sky, where, where did that come from? But he's just looking at me like, man. Yo, well, us New York guys, Wait, we don't it was kind of funny, because I just turned man. around, be like, yo, Rod, you okay? He's like, he's looking at me like, Miles, I still can't believe y'all beat us in default. <laughs> and we went at, oh, and he had the stupid double-double. Oh, man, Jesus Christ. And, you know, they build it up. They build it up. New York wow. City versus New York City. So, you know, they, they hyped it up. Chicago papers, right. Cleveland papers, Mouth versus Rock. I'm like, unbelievable. So he had the, I mean, we won. So thank God for that. I'm like, okay, I'll take that victory. Rod at about 24 and 12. I had 26. So we kind of evened each other out. But we came away with the victory. So I'm like, okay, Rod, I got one up on you. <laughs> so we always tease each other about that.
Right, right, right. That's one to grow on. For sure. By the way, I got my man, Mr. Elias himself, my guy BG here. He said you like one of his dogs, one of his big homies. So salute to my guy, yes, Brian sir. BG. Yeah, yeah, he's a super uh, awesome trainer out here. Also a ball player, and he runs the Elias Express Basketball Tournament. He's one of the guys that's keeping oh, Elias man. on the map that's right nice. now, man. Big shout out. For sure. You you know who else used to Who's tell that? me stories about you? Kenny Parker, Karis One Brother. Why does that name ring a bell? Because he played with okay, us at okay, Lincoln. okay. He was the other big man. It was uh, Spice, Silk, Damari, Silk, and John Askew, who's another uh, public figure out here in this world right now, basketball. But Kenny Parker, he's you know, he's <laughs> Kenny Parker now. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you know, he used to always. You know, these were these were the big homies who would tell me about the guys who I cool. needed to know about. Man, man, nothing but yeah, love, man. nothing but yeah. love. Crazy man. Yeah. So let let's talk about that tournament championship game versus Walter Berry, Kenny Smith, and Pearl Washington. What was that like? The uh, well, well, the, the, what. There was never an answer for Walter Berry. Okay. It, it didn't even matter. Every time I seen Walter play or every time we played against him, he would just so de he would just destroy our front line. It was like, okay, you can do whatever you want. You can put anybody you want on me. There's just no answer. And right. that little that little back and forth move, that little left hand shot he'd just drop on you, and he good for fifty. I mean I mean, there was just no answer. So, so, yeah. Well, man, he was so he was so dumb. Walter, how did you guys win? Now, now I'm not saying that I know you guys because I read this in the article that you guys beat him in the right, right, yeah. right. Wait, wait. That's the that's that's the one game I outclassed. I played against Kenny Smith. I got the MVP in that one. And so, 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 uh, that, that, first of all, that was a hell of a game. I mean, we went back and forth, but nobody knew who I was. Doc had just brought me on the scene. I think that was the first time Doc won his own tournament, uh, tournament of champions. Doc been running that tournament. That's no, wow. that, that is I, the I wasn't only sure time. if he had that a follow up time. or anything, if he ever won again. No, I told you we won. We won the city in '86, but then we lost uh, going to the championship so, so. nationally. And Ross Strickland's in the building, yes, by the way. Okay. You guys in the building, <laughs> Ross Strickland. Hey, Ross. hey, so, 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 I don't know. I, I, I'm just assuming. First of all, we're gonna play hard, okay? And it didn't matter. But, but, right. I was also almost like the new kid on the block on that scene. Nobody never heard of me. I mean, the guy's seen me before, but one of the stories, what Eric Singleton went up to Benjamin Franklin High School, right? So Eric, like Jason, got a big right. head when he got around Walter and Kenny Hutchison, right? One of the games that I played mm. in high school was against Benjamin Franklin. I had busted up my finger. My finger was so bad I can barely dribble, right? I go in for a layup, Kenny Hutchison glassed my shot. I ain't never been glassed before in my career, right? They they smash us. I mean, Walt, there ain't no answer for Walt, so it didn't even matter. Kenny, Eric introduces me to Kenny Hutchison after the game, and the way he introduced me rubbed me the wrong way, right? So Eric says, a mouse, mm -hmm. this is Kenny Hutch. I'll never forget. I said, okay. I said, Eric, you tell your boy the next time I see him, I'm going to crack his head. Wait. Tournament of Champions, I had 45. Lloyd was screaming up and down, Ooh. stop that mouse. Wait, I, I can tell you, I, I can, I can, I, it's clear in my mind today, sitting here telling you this story. 
he was pulling his hair out. I was doing them something ugly. I said, now, hey, Eric, how you like me now? See, I'm like, hey, dude, I don't care who you are. Man, I thought, in my mind, I'm an unstoppable force. I ain't never been shut down. So it's very easy. Oh, I'm going to get mine. So it don't even matter. And so I was so motivated. I'm like, okay. And I never had good games against Riverside in Brandeis High School. First of all, I couldn't stand those courts. It seemed like the rim was 14 feet high. I mean, I could never hit. Wait, I, 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 some, some of the gyms, I, I never, and, and against Riverside, he made sure he locked down. He tell, oh, man, everybody run, stop him. For the Broncos, no, no, get on him. He's like, Mouse, you know you don't never have a good game against me. I said, okay, not until now. Because <laughs> I got a different, I got a different motor, okay? You put your boys out there who I'm dying to play against. This is my second go around. They're going to know who I am today. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so wait, wait. We pulled that game out. We pulled that. He took me to Florida, too. That same, that, at the end, took me to Florida. He's like, okay, you, you're good enough. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, man. Yo, they coming out for you, man. Not only you got Ross Strickland on the check-in, you got another New York City legend. They just coming in and checking for you, man. Oh, Kenny Anderson man. in the building, man. I remember Kenny Anderson growing up. Oh man, 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 was he doing his thing? Jesus, love, love. You know, you know, you know. New York City, New York City. If we were not they they call us. That, that's New correct. York, that's, wait, wait. City, if you don't right? get nothing else, the guard play is gonna dominate. Okay, <laughs> we we were putting it on oh, people. Shit. You know, you know what I liked. Somebody asked me about Kenny Smith uh, at his party. I said, you know what? Kenny was the one guard I remember playing against back in the days. Because, you know, we were slashers. We was getting and ones way before and one came out. That was our game. We going to the hole. We getting and ones going to the hole. But Kenny always had that legitimate jumper. He had the legitimate jump, yes. and that's what made me, him stand out. I'm like, oh, man, Jesus. You slashing now? You coming with a jump or two? Ooh, that puts you on, on a serious level. So I always loved that. I always loved it. And he that's had right. Wait, wait. We had, yeah, yes, indeed. Too. So I always loved that about Kenny Smith. Oh, man, K man. K oh, Kenny man. Anderson. This, wait, this, wait, this wait. My wife tells a story because her and Ron – her and Ron uh, Mercer grew up together. And so while, while Ron was with the Celtics okay. and Kenny was uh, playing with them, uh, he introduced, he introduced, hey, hey, Kim, this is uh, Kenny Anderson. She was a big fan. She said she just stood there and looked at him for about 20 minutes. Ron tapped on and said, you okay? God damn, you ever never seen a star before? <laughs> and she's not ashamed about it. It's kind of funny. She tell that story. She's like, woo. Man, was I a fan of Kenny Anderson. And so, 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 man, shout out to Kenny Anderson. Super man, cool. Definitely, definitely. Yes, uh, my guy, uh, Dal Coxum on the check in. He was the teammate of Roosevelt Chapman. Definitely got to get Roosevelt Chapman on. I heard he, he agreed to come on the show, so we're going to get him on. Oh, soon. man, sweet. That's a, man, that's a blast from the fans. Okay, okay. I'm sure you will. Yeah, definitely, definitely. They they throwing these names out and not knowing we we behind the scenes okay. already talking a little bit. But yo D, keep getting at him, man. Let him know whenever he's ready. It's all good. Now, you know, how did you feel knowing you competed against the best, won, and still wasn't getting the the, the correct recognition you deserved? Or did you think you, you got it at that time? Um uh, I personally I this is before this is before the Sweet Sixteen thing. We talking about like as you killing right. these guys so, all around. Right. So the so I'm thinking uh, at that time, slowly but surely, people are know who I am. Oh, and if you didn't, you damn sure did after that game was played. And so so slowly but surely, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, my name was creeping out there. 
uh, Gauchos was starting to recruit me. Riverside was starting to recruit me. Uh, on 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 the college level, it's funny because I listened to an interview. Somebody somebody sent me a video of my first interview after the, after the uh, NCAA game, and so um, Bill Rafferty asked me the same question. And it's fun. my response was, you know, I, and I said, I'm like, man, I, I've been I've been watching all my fellow New Yorkers do their thing on TV. I said, the only way I'm going to get respect is in this NCAA tournament. That was my response. And somebody just shot me that video about two weeks ago. She's like, hey, I came across this and she sent me the video. That was my response. So on the college level, you know, I was seeing Rod. I was seeing Kenny. I was just looking at Pearl do his thing and Sarah Kim, like, damn, ain't getting no love until the NCAA tournament started. <laughs> I was like, okay, now guess what right, the new right. kid on the block? And so, so, so that right at that point, oh, I'm in there. I'm in there. It's like it's, it, it ain't no secret no more. Nothing like March Madness, right? Nothing like March Madness. Man, not not nothing like it, man. Cause you, you're on the, one of the biggest stages, you know, that America could provide for college basketball, and with all the fanfare, all the distractions going on, and for you to be able to stay focused and still come out, you know, one of the best guys on the floor, it, it right. just showed that you're yeah, ready for the yeah, big yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my thing. Wow. So so you get the Cleveland, okay. you get the Cleveland State right now. Uh, being a kid from New York City, what kind of transition did you have to make coming from New York City so, and going out there? To one Cleveland? of the biggest things that I had to adjust with, and I remember Kevin pulling me over. When I got to Cleveland, I, wouldn't, I didn't speak to nobody. Like, here I go. I'm a kid from Cleveland. I'm from New York City. I mean, I've been told all my life, you know, speak to strangers, right? I mean... If you ain't part right. of my That's nucleus, right. I ain't down with you because I don't know you. Until I get to know you, I, I, we don't got Right. I mean, if you say hello, I'll speak to you back, but I'm going to keep it moving. And so he pulls me over one time. He's like, hey, kid, like, Mouse, these people trying to get to know you, you know, you can open up a little bit to them. I said, okay, coach, I'll work on it. But I don't got no holler for you. I don't know you. I don't know what your intentions are. And not saying that it's good or bad. I said, hey, hey Mackie, I was told all right. my life we don't speak to strangers. Now you want all the, and you know, you know, this, we got the alumni, all the big money guys. You know, they've been hearing about me. I land in Cleveland. I, they see me play. You know how they flock to you. They want to get to know you. Hey, dude, you can't do nothing for me. I don't know. I'm here to boogie. I'm here to play ball and go to school. All the rest of this hoopla, that's y'all world. And so, so to answer your question, mm. I had to open up a little bit, be more, you know, just open myself up, be myself, let people see me for who I am. Yeah, because coming from New York City, like you said, right. we're, we're guarded, right? We, you know, we, we'd be in a train station, you don't know if a guy come up to you and say, what's up? That's right. Rob you, right? Or, or get you some kind of jam. So you always got to be guarded. And a lot of time when we go out of town, it's, it's a different uh, uh, transition we have to make because there's another step in our life that we're kind of trying to reach. And it takes a, uh, some of us, it takes a, a while for us to get adjusted to the whole college atmosphere. And then people recognizing us, not realizing people are trying to That's get right. to know us. Right. You Absolutely. Know, so the whole different Absolutely. world. <laughs> Listen, so you go to a city, where the Cleveland Browns getting their ass kicked, the Cleveland <laughs> Indians getting their ass kicked, <laughs> right? The the in eighty four eighty five, they you know these guys had a uh, Cleveland State had a losing record of four and eleven, and then it improved to that twenty one and three, and then you guys came and and changed everything around. Like, were you ready for prime time once everything started to happen? Uh... I wasn't, but it was very easy to adjust. Because, you know, you, you, you don't know what it's like until you in the moment. And so by then, with the season that we was having, 
by the love the city was showing us. And when we would go out, like the Cleveland Brown, Derek Minifield, uh, Herm Fontenot, when we'd be in the clubs together, they would call my name before they called the Cleveland Browns and, and the Cavs. They like Mouse McFadden is in the house tonight. <laughs> Man, them dudes couldn't stand me. The Cleveland Browns, oh, Jesus. And so so it was kind of funny. I'm like, okay. And hey, guess what? We showing, we, we doing our thing right about now. That's all it takes. You know, everybody love a winner. Everybody want to be part of a winner. If you're losing, you know, Brown's always going to have that right. history. And, they, and, and, and Cleveland is always going to love their brownies. Y'all not doing nothing. But we, we, we selling out, we selling out our gym. We got standing room only. We blasting everybody by 20 and 30. The games is over. It's just a big old party every time Cleveland State played that, that, that season, 86. Oh, man, it was so unbelievable. Every station, every radio station, every TV station, the only thing they talk about in Cleveland, Cleveland State basketball. And if you haven't watched the Vikings, you need to get down to this arena, and they can't get in because it's wall to wall. And so we're blowing everybody out. And so it kind of prepped. It, it, it prepped it prepped us in a way. It prepped us in a way. So it's every game, every game, we're like, we're winning. We're blowing teams out. Everybody's doing their thing. More and more people was trying to get, you know, be by your side. You find new friends. Everybody's coming out of the woodwork. And then the NCAA happened. And that really put you in a whole nother. He'd be right back. I'm probably somebody's probably trying to call him. You good? Oh, so, oh, so that NCAA put you at a whole nother level of recognition and 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 a totally different fan base. Uh, so by then, I think that I think the rec the regular season actually prepped me pretty good. Um, I know in the NCAA, I'll tell you a little story. We're in the NCAA. We're in New Jersey. Some guy walk up to me. He said, hey, you want to make some money? I said, excuse me? Now, I'm, I'm just a freshman. You know, I don't know no better. I'm just coming here to boogie. He says, uh, I need you to throw the game. I, 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 didn't know, I didn't know what that meant. Like, I said, throw the game. He said, yeah, he fixed the game. So I'm thinking, I says, okay, what do I got to do? Glenn, check it, <laughs> true story. What? So, so I said, this is what I, this is what I said. I want a million dollars in cash up front. He looked at me like, no, you didn't sit, get the fuck away from me. Excuse my, so I go to <laughs> Mackie, right? I said, hey, Mac. I mean, some dude just walked up to me talking about trying to fix the game. I had a security guard with me the rest of the tournament. When I went to the bathroom, the security guard went to the bathroom. I'm like, Jesus Christ, if I knew this was going to happen, I wouldn't have told you. True story, Glenn. True story. <laughs> I'm like, man, you just ruined my... But wait, wait, some dude, wow. he like, can you point him out? I'm like, man, let me tell you something. I'm not even worried about that no more. But they got a private detective, man, every place I went for the rest. I'm like, man, you got to be kidding me. So it gets that deep and that crazy. Yeah. That's Wait, crazy. I tell that story, people be like, ooh. So, 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 I. Yo, that's crazy. Well, what was your favorite pair hey, of sneakers to Glenn. fall in during the 80s? Puma Sky LX. Puma. Sky, and I can tell, I can answer that question. That's the last pair of high tops I ever wore. We were sponsored by Nikes. I'm like, keep them. I went to low tops. After, wait, wait, we were sponsored by Nike. I couldn't stand. I'm like, I said, I said wait, I went up to Kevin, right? I said, Mackie, let me tell you a little secret. You should have asked us what kind of sneakers we like. You get the money from Nike. 
Man, I ain't wearing that crap. I used to wear Reeboks. Nike guy come to one of our game. He looks at my feet. He says, Mackie, what mouse got on his feet? They pulled me over at halftime. He said, put a piece of tape over the logo. Because <laughs> that's a good, you know, wow. we, we sponsored by Nike. I can't be wearing no other brands. I said, Mackie, you didn't ask me what kind of sneakers I like to wear. You getting the money from Nike. We're not getting no money from this. The basketball that you signed with, you getting that money for the basketball. It asked me if I'd like to bounce the ball. Mm. See, and he used to be like, this smart ass kid. But but he always respected that out of me too. Cause I'm like, yo, I ain't I ain't sugarcoating nothing. You getting all the money from it. See, these college coaches is getting all the money, right? We doing all the That's dirty right. work. And they getting all the money. I can't stand that even till today, Glenn. I'm like, Somebody gonna give me some money around here. Y'all not gonna make all this money and I ain't getting nothing out of this deal. Lo and behold, I was okay. I was okay, but so Puma, so Puma, Puma and Reebok and the were your Reeboks goals. that I was wearing in college, you wouldn't believe I was balling in these little Reeboks. I'd just go find me a comfortable pair of sneakers. Almost like a track sneaker. And I'm just balling out in these little Reeboks. But Puma, Sky, Ella, I'll never forget those sneakers. Now, Bombito said that's the best Puma that okay. best okay. that Puma ever that's made. That, man, once they cut that out, I was almost heartbroken. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And, and, and who broke the bank on the Puma? They signed somebody wow. to the contract. Oh, Puma went down after that. Was it Paul Presley? No, was it no, Paul it was Presley? somebody. It was somebody else. Cause oh man, wait, wait. They were giving us, they were giving us so much equipment. The Puma guy gave us his phone number. Tell me what you want. He would just send us stuff on the slide. I'm like, I know y'all going down. Ain't no way in the world you're gonna last too long with this. But but when he was coming to our game, man, we we were doing our thing. He just like, here you go. He gave me his card. Hey. I, I need some sneakers. <laughs> he, he just sent some stuff. He was like, oh, we was like, I think we had the whole city of Cleveland wearing Puma. Bob Crawford, he was our 6'10 center. He had the whole east side of Cleveland in Puma gear. He was like, man, who are these guys coming down here with gear like this? Bob giving away everything. I'm like, oh, man, you know, you know, all good things come to an end. I'm like... <laughs> You're going to spoil our party. Wow. Listen, but if anybody from Puma listening, that's all I wear. <laughs> so when you said Puma, my eyes Puma. lit up. Puma. That's all I wear is oh. Puma. Okay. That's okay. it. I'm a Puma guy. Okay. Straight up and down. I'm a Puma guy. Barbito, <laughs> I'm a Puma guy. You don't even got a word. Straight up and down. Listen, my guy BG from LES said, yo, Pooh, tell Mouse, my pops, preacher, preacher Mike. Mike. Yes, up? sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Shout outs right back. Preacher Mike. Yes, sir. Tell my shout out right back. Okay. No doubt. Look, look. They they all jumping off. Right, you, man. This is oh, the love, man. right? New we York have City, to. Man, they showing a lot of love, man. Appreciate your show. Appreciate your show. Love it. No. I told you, I told you as soon as you called me. Hey, Thank you, brother. Thank tell you. me what, what time and what day you need me there. I'm there. Easily. Right. Super fast. Super fast. Yeah. So, you know, as, as you know, we, we trying to uh, blaze these trails with these stories, right? Some never heard before stories, and you just blew everybody's mind with that <laughs> guy who came up to you and said, he wanted you to fix the game and you said i don't know what that means but if you give me a million dollars some that you know will probably blow his mind you know those are the things that we we rarely hear about and, and we know there's a lot of things that go on under the table but let's talk okay. about some legit things right now right when, when you guys go on the road how much money you guys was getting because jay major said when he was at seat in the hall 
They was getting five dollars a game. Real talk. That was their good um, money. Thank God thank we didn't go to Seton Hall. But I'll tell you what, our kitty wasn't that much bigger. If I'm right, wait, wait. If I'm <laughs> right, wait. And I'll tell wait, wait, that is so funny. Because we had we used to scream lump sum, lump sum, lump sum. Wait, Glenn, you bring it back memories. <laughs> it's it's funny that you should say that because I think I think we were probably getting like ten dollars. Right. And so every now and then they kick us twenty. And we thought that was like big. So we'd be like, yo, lump sum, because we was killing everybody. So we'd be like, hey dude, come on, man. Lump sum, right, right. lump sum. Like twenty dollars gonna do some. So 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 he's probably right. I would say probably ten, ten dollars. And so to double up, like it was a big deal to us, it was twenty. Wasn't a lot. Wow. And so now you're asking kids, right, who go to school back in our days, uh, be on your best behavior. Somebody approach you. Man, I'm starving. School is closed. Can't get no more food. Somebody want to buy me a burger and I supposed to say no? I don't give a damn if you went to Cleveland State, you alumni or who the hell you are. If I'm hungry, and you offering to buy me some food or you alumni and I supposed to say no? Many NCA rules done lost their minds. It's so set. It's so set up again. Isn't that to... a shame? Right. Now, now let's, think, let's think about that. If you if you went over somebody's house to eat or somebody, uh, Mr. Mike, who owns the sandwich shop, give you a free sandwich. You in trouble. You can get in trouble for that. Are you kidding me? I mean... But the NCAA right. is a nonprofit organization. Wait. The only company in America to today who has not lost a profit in their umpteen years in business. As a business. Well, the NFL, the NFL is right. a nonprofit wait, organization. Wait, 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 wait. NCAA, you know. their revenue only increased since day one. They're not losing no money. That's right. You mean to tell me? Right. They don't have you, to pay the players. Either. And, and, and these rules that you set forth is like, it, you know, it's against us. No, 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 no. And, and I always say the golden rule is you make us money first and then you can go get your money. And so with that being said, like, you know, they at 18 years old, Basketball ain't nothing but a game. But it's big business. Yeah. How are you going to tell me if I'm 18 years old and I want to go right to the pros? That's a job. If I put an application in for any job, that's all it is, is a job. It's either you're qualified or you're not. Yeah. So playing basketball shouldn't exclude me from wanting to try out for an NBA or NFL or any other pro league. Hey, if I got the talents, I should be able to go. But you know what they tell us? Nope, you got to go to college first. You got to make me some money, and then you can go get your own money. But you're going to make me some money first. The, the, the rules is just insane. Uh, and they starting to bend, and I say it's starting to bend because – a lot of those guys is passing away and God rest their souls. But we got new generations coming in. So with new generations, there's new thoughts. And, and new thoughts changes the game. So finally, they at least they opened up the door to like, hey, let's let these kids make some money. It kills me to see these guys say, oh, no, they shouldn't. They should go to school for like a Charles Barkley. No offense. Love Barkley. Love, love, love his skills. But your model about going to college, we should go to college. Hey, wrong. And I'll tell you why it's so wrong. Oh, if you get hurt, uh, um, you may not be able to play no more basketball.
my leg hurting does right. not stop my brain from working. I can always go to school, okay? If I get injured, I can always go to school. But to make that type of money is a golden opportunity. You're supposed to go for it. Nobody should hold you back from a job because that's all it is at the end of the day. Even though they call it amateur sports, it's a job. It's big business. These coaches is making millions of dollars. That's a job. Don't categorize, don't categorize me as an amateur when there's so much money involved. That's a business. And if it wasn't a job, these coaches wouldn't be yelling at me. What you yelling at me for? If we lose, who cares? Right? Think about it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> why, are you get, why are you getting so upset? Right, right, right. right? Why, why are you getting so upset? Important? It's just a game. No, it's a business. Pay me for my services. Facts. Yeah. That's so real. That's so real. You, you think about, you know, my guy, salute to my guy, Lucky. Um, he was just telling me about the insides of high school basketball, high school sports. And he showed me this, this list, the uh, name, image, and okay. likeness list. And these kids are getting paid. Like the number one player is getting paid, I think, is Bronny James. He's getting like $5 million a year, right? And it's still in high school. And, and it goes down. Football, track, you know, college, kids and high school kids. But what they don't tell these kids is that's just another mm -hmm. thing that the government mm -hmm. taps. Mm -hmm. Right? That's that is the key, and the you know, and I, I'm not only gonna get too too political, but when when they was pushing for women's lib right, women's right to go out and work, that was just so they Basically. could have another person to tax. Absolutely, right. Okay, and a lot of times we don't see that, and they don't, you know, they let it happen That's right. on their time, not on our time. When they feel like, okay, we didn't got enough money from this group, let's let another group come out so we can tax them. And that's what's happening to these young kids. Wow, that's, that's deep. That's going on right now. But that, that that's so factual. Yeah. Because you know, you you know, Uncle Sam got to have his, he so, got to have his name and everything. Oh, it ain't happening. Got, listen, they call it student athlete, right? But you're really an athlete student. You're spending more time playing and practicing for basketball that is correct. than you are in school. Right. So, 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 you know what kills me? You're trying to compare the student athlete and just the regular student who's going to school. So I always say, hey, newsflash, yes. you're just a regular student. Respect. No problem. Tell me when you're going to put 80,000 people in these goddamn seats and make this school some money. Okay, so no, we're not on the same plane, okay? Every Saturday, That's right. I'm looking at, when, I, when I look at college, I'm looking at dollars. I see it from a different perspective. I'm looking at these football stadiums. Oof. Michigan, 105,000, right? We pack every Saturday. Mm. The basketball arena. 40, 50,000. I'm looking at the dollars that's rolling in in these big schools. And at adult time, you can't give me $5? Are you crazy? I mean, what's wrong with this picture? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. I, I don't know what's going on, and I'm glad it's changing. I'm glad it's changing for this young, for this, for this, for this generation, which is super cool. But I know it was hard for us, and 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 it's always going to be fun because we love it. So no matter what, at the end of the day, yeah, we love it, and so we're going to do it. We're going to participate, but there needs to be some type of common ground. Okay, we got we we got to come to some type of understanding. And this can't be no one-way street. I mean, because cause then it's unjust and it's unfair. 
So, so, so real, man. Did did you play any pro ball after? Um, so, so yeah, yeah. Your so, so, was so over? the late great Flip Saunders, Flip Saunders drafted me in the CBA. Uh, oh man, wait, wait, wait. That was a super squad. Leo Routens, Dwayne McClain, mm. Tony Clark, uh, Lancaster Gordon. Oh man, we smashed everybody. So, so I was the rookie on the team, right? And and I didn't understand how things work on that level, but I know something. I've been playing all my life, and Mackie, Mackie, it's probably Mackie's fault. My mindset. Because one of the one of the key ingredients that he used to lure me to Cleveland State, he says, when I throw the ball up in the air, I don't give a damn if you're a freshman or a senior. May the best man win, right? <clears throat> you damn sure got my intention on that note because we know there's some schools that he feels obligated to play his seniors because they're seniors. Okay, back in the day, no problem. But Mackey thing is, Mackey don't give a damn who you are or what level you are. When he throw that ball in the air, he says, I'll play your man and I'll give you the minutes. So me, with my ego coming out of New York City, I can't believe you got anybody on your team that's going to tangle with me. Okay, I, I just finished. I'm coming out of New York City. I'm breaking fools off left and right. So I'm easily going to play. So we had Steve Corbin was from Yonkers, New York. <clears throat> Vince Richards was from Cincinnati, Ohio. And so they were both the seniors. And so they were used to splitting the time in Mackey's system. And so that summer when I came up, first thing they tell me, oh, man, you ain't going to play. I I'm going to play because I'm a senior. I said, well, you better go back in Mackey's office and explain to him how he ain't going to play me when I'm going to break y'all off because y'all going to lose your job. And so... And me and Steve, mm. you know, he's from New York and he's been running things before I got here. And so we, we kind of, we got off on the wrong page at that time. But I'm like, hey, it ain't going to be up to you or me. When he throw this ball out, I'm going to see if you're going to win that job. Ten games into my freshman year, he was like, turn green, you're a starter. <laughs> I'm like, I, I was averaging 10, 12 points coming off the bench. I only averaged 19 minutes my first year. And so Clinton Smith wow. averaged 26 minutes. He's a senior. And we just smashing everybody. He averaged 26 minutes per game. So we were averaging between 12 and 18 points in half of a game in Mackey's system. So if people think about it, man, these dudes is averaging, man, if you doubled up their minutes, I'm like, as a freshman, I'm getting 12 points. I'm like, Mackey. Jesus, dude. I used to beg him for one more minute, Glenn. Wait, wait. I, I averaged 19, right? I'm like, yo, dude, can I at least play half a game? I'm like, you, you won't even let me play half a game. <laughs> so, I mean, that was the inside little thing we used to tease about. But well, everybody was begging for more minutes. But our system-wise and rotation with 10 guys in and out all the time, that's, that's just part of his system. So nobody was going to play like 30 minutes or 40 minutes, especially when Clinton Smith was only playing 26 minutes. We can't complain. Ain't nobody going to play more minutes than Clinton Smith because he's our pro. Uh, so, 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 right. so that, that, that was, uh, so Mackie had actually forced me to think that way. So when Flip Saunders drafted me, like Tony White with the point guard. And so, Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, dude, I know I'm better than this fool. But Flip used to tell Mouse, you got to wait your turn. Wait my turn. It kind of it kind of blew my mind because I'm used to, hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. He's like, Mouse, he's going to get called up and it's going to be your world. I said, Flip, personally speaking, man, that dude, average, he's taking about 20, 25 shots a game. Ain't nobody calling him up to no NBA especially with the powerhouse team we had. Right. He looked, he gave me this look like, that's pretty smart of this kid, but 
you still got to wait your turn. So I was just like, you know, I started going through the motions and we was blasting everybody. I was like, man, this ain't even fun for me. I'm like, yo, can you trade me? Uh-oh. Why did I say that, Glenn? So so, so he, he traded me, so we pulled the trigger. They sent me to Sioux Falls. He sent me to Sioux Falls, but to get back to it. So I played in the CBA. I played in the National Basketball League. I was at Fayetteville. I was at Fayetteville. We were playing, we were practicing on Fort Braggs. I played in the USBL. I was in Miami with the Miami Tropics. And then, uh, and then I went to Australia. So I played five years. I played five years after college, did a little bit more traveling, made some money, blase, blase, came back. Cleveland State offered me a job. I got tendonitis. So the only thing you can do is rest. So I was back in Cleveland. Cleveland State offered me a job and I shut it down. I didn't even, I'm like, you know what? I had a beautiful run. Life is good. I can shut it down at this point. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, you, you, you had such a historic run uh, and, and what you did would never be forgotten, you know. And as long as the NCAA is around, they're always going to be playing this <laughs> magic yes, moment. Right, right. Right? And, and, and when they talk about Cinderella's and, and beating the, you know, the mid-majors beating the big schools, they're going to have to bring up your name and, and Cleveland State for what you guys did. You guys kind of started that, it jump-started that whole thing. So, man, most most guys came in, you know, even imagine being in that situation, let alone being the one right, guy who yeah, did it. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, so, so, so that's super cool. No doubt. So, that's cool, man. So, so you said, again, because my, my last question is, if you could change anything, what would it be? Wow. And you said I, you wouldn't you change anything. You know what? Anything. I, and I have this, 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 this model in life. Um, I don't have any regrets because a decision is based upon the time that you're dealing with a situation. And so later on for you to say, oh, I would have done this or I would have done that doesn't really make sense to me because not at that time you wouldn't have done this or that. So people say, you know what? If I, if if I knew what I knew now back then, I would have made a different decision. But but wait wait, you're living at the moment for the moment at that time. Your decision that you're making is based upon that time. Uh, of course, we're gonna get older. Of course, we're gonna get wiser. Of course, we can say we would have changed our decision, not necessarily. You got to go back to that time that you're in and the decision that you made, I feel you live with it. May not have been the best, could have been worse. Who knows? But for sure, again, my life has been fantastic. No complaints. I mean, my decisions that I make, I hope they were the best. So far, they've been really good. And I always say it could have been worse. So, so the man upstairs has a plan for everybody. Okay, you live your life. You be the best person that you can be. You respect your last name and your elders. And you keep on moving. Salute, brother. Definitely, definitely. So we're going to get out of here. But before we get out of here, we got to do our top five, top five, top five, top five. Okay. Mouse. Who are your top five players <clears throat> in Cleveland State history? Frank Edwards, my native New Yorker, because when I first arrived at Cleveland State, the only person they was talking about was Frank Edwards. Well, I'm, uh, I said, well, I'm glad there's another New Yorker coming to tear this town up. Okay, this New York City love up in this place. <laughs> so Frank, Frank, Frank Edwards, That's Clinton right. Smith, I would put, I would put Darren Tillis in there. 
I loved Gravel Craig. He was a point guard. He played. Mm. He should have been with Rowley. But and his his college career wasn't like fascinating, but I never lost a game with this guard in all the leagues I played in Cleveland. So so I I I mm. always liked Gravel Craig. And 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 I didn't see enough of Norris Coles, but I respect what he has done to get your name up in those rafters. And I heard he's a great person. And we've met and we've talked. And so I'll put Norris Cole in there. Okay, okay. Top five players you played against. So I'm going to start off in New York City because Walter Berry was just a straight beast. Uh, Rod is my dude, so Rod is definitely always going to be up in there. Uh, right. Roy Tarpley at Michigan was just a flat out. Wait, wait, he was a man among. Oh man, he he was a man among boys. So I'm I'm, I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to put Roy Tarpley in there. Uh. David Robertson, career-wise, I might put in there. Because what he did against Syracuse, he didn't do that against us. He had a double-double, but he didn't destroy us because Eric Mudd had a double-double too. So when you, you guys actually even each other out. But for his career and what he has established, and I played against him, I'm going to put him in there. I'll say David Robertson. How did you shoot over Oh, him, wait, man? wait. You're not blocking my shot. <laughs> hey, Glenn, you ain't blocking my shot. Wait, that's why I tell you the story. Man, Kenny Hutch pinned my, he pinned my shot on the board. Plow! Nobody's ever done that. You're not blocking my shot. First, I'm way too crafty, okay? So I can get my shot off. So I'm not never worried about that. I'm not never That's worried about Rob that. Said. He had yep. one time yep. I shot a real high shot up over him in the NCAA tournament. And yeah, I'm like, I watched the way he batted yes. all these shots. I'm like, Jesus, dude, not me. Uh, and so, who would be my fifth person? Who would be my fifth, my fifth guy? Uh, oh, college. That's hard. Um. That's a hard one. I'm stuck on four, Glenn. That's a hard one. I'm trying to think. Like, no, and I and I'm trying. Been, and I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Been, did you put Kenny Hutchinson on that list? No. Um, I would probably go with going back. See, see, I, I'm going to put Kenny Smith on that list. Then I'm going to put K Smith on that list. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. Last one. Top five players in New York wow. City history. Okay. I heard about Joe Hammonds. I got a chance to play against Joe Hammonds in LaGuardia House. He he was he was huh? he was just about done. He done he done. But, wow, the legendary status of Joe Hammonds. I'm going to put him in there. Lloyd Daniels. Sweet Pea. I call oh, him Uncle yeah. L. Every time he'd be like, as soon as he hear other, he's like, that got to be Mouse. The only one person called him, hey, hey Uncle L. We played Miami Tropics. I played with Lloyd in Miami Tropics, too. What you, you call him? Uncle L. I speak to Lloyd all the time. What you call him? Uncle L. Wait, he's gonna Uncle know. L. He's like, yo, only one person. He's like, I gotta be Mouse. He's like, oh, nobody else calls me Uncle L except Mouse. Uh, so Uncle L definitely got to right. go on my list. Uh, New York City, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. We gotta put Kareem. Got you. We gotta put Kareem. Uh. I'm putting Rod on the list. Rod is always on my list. 
Raw God, is always, always on the list. Uh, and so, who who else in the city? Uh, and Calvin Lamb. Well, Calvin Lamb, because that was my... And Calvin Lamb. So okay, gotta I sure will. Got to get Cal Lamb on the show. Wait, this wait, I sure will. Calvin Lamb had four-point range before the three-point line came out. Wait, and he had the Ooh. vertical to go with it. And he had the vertical. So Cal oh, Lamb, yes. that's my backcourt oh, yeah. mate. I got to put him on there, too. Wow. For those of you, uh, I interviewed Lloyd Gaines as well. Uh, I got him in Tillery Park, a nice sit-down with Lloyd. You go check it out on my YouTube. And just scroll down. You'll see some people, you know, you probably, you know, didn't think we'd probably be on the show. Never heard, right. or probably didn't hear from him in a long yes. time. Jerry Ice Brennan. Yes. You know, yes. just scroll down. Okay. Hey, yo, listen, brother, let me tell you. It has been an honor to speak to you and, and, and get you on the show and, and yes, build, sir. you know, connect yes, this brotherhood. Because that's all it's about. This New York City Brotherhood. And, and a lot of times when guys move out of the city, people kind of forget, you know? And I want to make sure they never forget the things that you did to make sure we was proud in front of the TV set screaming your name because that same year you was rocking out in the NCAA tournament. That's when we won the city championship. And I, I held your name with pride because I felt like, you know, right. I was yes, sir. Okay. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so when you were doing your thing, right. you were chanting in front of the television like gold miles go every step of the way. And I know millions of other people across the country were doing the same thing. So I, I want to say thank you. Thank you for being a stand up brother. Thank you for being someone that, you know, that we cherish and, and we looked up to. And, and as you can see, all the guys came out to show you love tonight. Man. Hey, so, man, really appreciate you, you, Glenn, for having me on. Man, much love to all our New York City brothers and sisters. Man, keep doing your thing. Enjoy your life. Super pleasure. Man, that made my that made my evening. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. And, and, and tell you a little bit <laughs> thank sure you will. for connecting yes, us. Indeed. You know what I mean? So that, okay, that was cool. the reason why this song had daddy. Here, so. You got five more minutes. I'm Definitely. like, okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll let her know. Cool, cool. IG, one love. All right, brother. Thank you. IG, okay. all right. Yeah. All right. Man, time just flies, right? It was yesterday, well, it seemed like yesterday, when I was watching the Mouse Man do his thing on CBS Sports, killing everyone, you know? And, and you get a New York City guy who's representing on television, and he got New York City on his back, and he carried us with pride everywhere he went. They call him the mouse man, but he played amongst giants, and he was a giant, giant in the New York City basketball culture. So never forget, a lot of times it might not be the path that other people have went on. You create your own path. He did it out on his own. Didn't play high school ball, but made up for it. But it takes a special person or people to come in our lives to help us stay on that trail. And the legendary Doc Nacelli was that man. Rest in peace, Doc. He the one that made sure that Mouse could get connected to college and hook up with Cleveland State. And the rest was at the Mouse. And I know he made Doc proud. So salute to you, Mouse. Rest in peace, Doc. We love you. And thank you for what you did for us. On that note, I'm about to be out of here. I'm your host, Glenn Pooh Hardy. And you've been watching Basketball Head, the official home for New York City basketball. And as we always say, peace. You're ready. You're ready. You're ready.